Welcome back. Today it's about simple retouching of this landscape and I'm going to show you how I go from here to here in Photoshop. Alright guys, my name is Philip and let's jump right, as usual, into Photoshop. Now, this image was not very difficult to process because it's a, it's a simple landscape and I don't want to do too much to it. I like the way it looks, I like the composition and the only thing I'm not too happy about is the color. So we're just going to work a little bit on the color of these foregrounds here, right here. And uh, we're going to bring back or we're going to bring out the mountain back here. And then we're going to change the sky a little bit and once we have done that we're going to be happy, happy people. Okay, let's get going to be happy. As usual, I'll start off by copying my background layer by hitting Command and J on my keyboard. Doing so copies the layer as you can see now here. Now I want to work in three or four parts rather. First I'm going to start with the, I suppose the mountain back here. We're going to make that pop a little bit more by just increasing the color saturation back there. Secondly, I will take these trees which are scattered around over here and I'll just make them a bit more green and maybe a bit of a lighter green as well. And thirdly, we'll work on the foreground. We're going to give the foreground a bit more color and put the attention onto certain, you know, a couple of those plants, not all of them. And once we have done that, step four is to work on that sky, which is, I suppose, in that sense, the most difficult part. We're going to have, we're going to have look, words because we're going to have to cover the, the sky over here because, I don't know, it makes it feel, look, I don't know, it's just weird if there's sky and everything and it's just gray and uh, uh, you'll see, you'll see in the end. Let's just get going. So, in order to get going with the mountain back here, I'll just create a simple hue saturation layer by clicking on the little, you know, symbol for the hue saturation. Uh, either that, I did it twice, I just need it once, or you just go down to FX. Not true, here, sorry, my mistake, I meant of course over here. I'm normally never going here, I always have my thing here. You get the idea. Now, I'm just looking at the mountain, and what I'll do, I'll just increase the saturation. I'll increase to something like, maybe something like that, it's not bad. Now, of course, now that I have created this layer and I have increased the saturation, I have increased the saturation for all the image. And in this case, I'm actually not interested just yet in doing so. So, if I hit Command and I on my keyboard, I will hide the total effect. And you can see that the, the little square here, the layer mask, has become black. Black will hide the whole effect. And now I can use a white brush on that black layer mask to bring out the effect wherever I need to. And I want it, guess where, in the mountain. So choosing an opacity of say 30%, I can just hit the number 3 on my keyboard and I get the opacity of 30%. I'm just going to go over that mountain in uh, white. I'm just going to bring out this color increase where I feel like it looks good. And I think it looks good over here. Okay, let's just bring that out a little bit more, just up until here. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit and look at the before and after and see if we like that. And I do like it. Cool. Now let's have also a look at the mountain here and see if I want to put it in there as well. What you can do, if you hover over your, you know, the layer mask, you hit shift on your keyboard and then you click on that layer mask, you're going to switch it off, all right? Therefore, the effect is going to be shown everywhere again. You can just check if you want to bring it through somewhere else as well. In my case, I think I'm going to bring it through a little bit here in the mountain as well. So for that, I make my brush a bit larger and I'll just tap it a couple of times onto the rocks right here. Awesome. Step one. I'm happy with that. We can live with this. Cool. Let's do the same thing again. I'm going to create another hue saturation layer. This time we're going to take care of these trees here. Instead of only changing the saturation, I will also change the hue. All right. And I'm just looking at these trees. I'm just going to start by switching around the hue to the left and to the right. Well, that would be interesting. What? No, let's, let's go to the right. <laughs> okay. And that's not a bad green. We can also give it a bit more saturation. How about something like... why not something like that? You can of course experiment with these things, they're completely up to you. I'm going to hit Command and I on the keyboard again. I'm going to blacken out, if that's a word, the layer mask. And now with a brush and opacity of 40% this time, we are brave. I'm just going to bring through that color change into these areas right here. Zooming in a little bit more, because we have to be a little bit careful not to go over edges and things like that. So I'm just going to take my time here and go over these trees. That's a very nice green, actually. I like that color. That's kind of cool. And once I have done that, I'll bring you back. It's going to take me just a moment. And we are back, and this is looking way better. If I switch it on or off when I zoom in just a bit more, you can see that we have now a more, how would you say, juicy green, I suppose? Awesome. And now let's go to the third step, which is just the foreground. 
and adding a little bit more color to the foreground as well. I'm going to use the exact same principle. So I'm going to create a hue saturation layer and I'm going to increase saturation until I have a feeling that there is enough color for me to play with in the foreground of that image. So let's just zoom out a little bit. Um, okay. Maybe a bit more. It's always tricky to make these kind of decisions, but let's just stay somewhere here. I'm going to invert the layer mask again by hitting Command and I, and now I'm going to go in with my brush, make it nice and large to something like that, and with an opacity of 30%, I'll just start through to put an accent or some sort of attention on a couple of areas. I don't just want to go in and, you know, increase the hue or the saturation rather for all of these at the same time. I prefer just to pick a couple of goodies and then only increase the... Uh, the you know what I mean, increase the saturation for those. Okay, that's already enough, I think. It's just going to put a little bit of attention onto certain areas, which is something I do very much like. Okay, now that we have done that, there's one more thing I want to do to the foreground, and maybe a little bit to the mountain as well. For that, I'm going to create a so-called stamp visible. And I'm always doing these things on my video tutorials, and today I'm going to show you again how once more how that works. A stamp visible essentially copies everything that you have that you have seen that you can see on your image right now onto a separate layer. Okay, so it's going to recreate the image with all the adjustments you have made in between. For that, I'm going to hit Command or Control, Alt, Shift, and E on my keyboard, and this will, as you can see here right now, create a new layer with all the information on it. Okay, so even if I switch the uh, the hue the hue saturation layers off, uh, you would still not see that they are off because everything is already on that layer, right? Cool. Now, with that layer, I'm going to change its blend mode from normal down to soft light. And soft light always, at least to me, has some sort of an interesting effect. I'm not sure why that is, but I kind of like it. So in this case, we're going to take it as well. We're going to re uh, reduce the opacity a little bit to maybe something like 80%. And now I just do not want this everywhere. I only want it in the foreground and not really in the mountain, I'll just realize. So what you can do, you can create a layer mask on that layer. And the layer mask helps you to hide areas from that layer from other areas. Awesome, let's do this. So I've clicked on the, little, on the little Japanese flag symbol in the lower right hand corner right here, and this is gonna add a layer mask, which looks like this. If I now use a brush by hitting B on my keyboard, I make this brush incredibly large, and with an opacity of say 50% and a black brush, okay, you see that my brush is black here in the, in the left hand corner, I can just go over and remove this particular effect uh, from areas where I don't like it. And I don't like it in these areas here. I just want it in the foreground because it gives it a little bit of a, how would you say, a harsher feeling for now. And I kind of like that. Let's stick with this. Okay, and I'm kind of happy with that. You can see if I switch this layer back on or off, uh, you'll see that I only affect the foreground and not the background, which is exactly what we were looking for. Nice. Okay, let's go and work a little bit on that sky, right? Because, I mean, you know, the sky is not too bad, but it could be a little bit better. And I want to darken it down first. I want to get rid of this super bright spot here. And then I want to hide the spot back here, I like the blue spot. We're going to give it a little bit of a, a nice motion blur so that everything looks like it's kind of moving and smooth. And it's just, uh, just going to finish the image up quite nicely. Let's get going. First, we're going to darken down the sky. For that, I'm going to click on a simple curve adjustment layer. And I'll just bring it down. I'll bring it down probably... I'm just looking at the very center of the, uh, of the sky right now where there's all the clouds and stuff. Actually, no, you know what? We're going to do it the other way around. We're going to bring it down a little bit like that. Once more, I'm going to hit Command and I, which is going to hide this darkening effect, essentially. And with a white brush and an opacity of whatever 50%, I'm just going to bring that through. Now, instead of doing another curve adjustment layer to darken down this very center part, I'm going to use a levels adjustment layer. And levels, I just find more useful if you have to darken down something a lot because you have much more fine control over what has to happen. So in my case, I need a lot of darkness. So let's go to something like that. I also do not want it to look unnatural, especially in this you know, mid, mid part there, mid section there. So I'm just going to bring it down to something like that. Let's invert that hitting Command and I, and with an opacity of 20% maybe, I'm just going to bring that through to somewhere here. And just a little bit. I don't need it too much. I just don't want it to have this crazy brightness it had before. And if it doesn't have that, I'm actually quite a happy person. Okay, let's just remove that back here from this mountain a little bit again. Okay, that's perfect. And by the way, you can hit X on your keyboard to cycle between black and white on your brush. Okay, so you can see now it's black. If I hit X, it's going to be white. And this is important if you work on layer masks such as here, because then you can, with white, make something visible, which is, you know, the effect, whatever that is here. In my case, it's the, the brightness. 
and or if you use black and you switch and you can hide it again from the image which is kind of nice to know you know so you switch back and forth you know just work on your image work away and it's kind of nice okay so we have darkened down this a tiny bit i think that's actually all right it's not bad what we have to do now is to adapt the sky on the right hand side here and for that my suggestion would be i'm just going to copy parts of the sky which is already in there for example this part and i'm going to copy it down to cover the sky here a little bit for that we need a new layer first right we have to put the information somewhere so let's hit command alt shift and N on the keyboard to get a new layer and I'm going to use the stamp tool the stamp tool is that the actual name it the clone stamp tool good damn it okay now that we have the clone stamp tool selected I'm just going to go in and hold alt with which I can select the source I want to copy I'm just going to select this part nope that was too low let's make it a bit smaller I'm just going to select this part right here and with an opacity of hundred percent I'm just going to start to make copy of this part here of the clouds. So I'm just going to go in and copy that part. Now if I hit V on my keyboard, I get the move tool and I can move that around. And you see, yay, a perfect copy has uh, come uh, off to words, a perfect copy of what we had before on the top. I can also, if I go to the edges, now turn this around, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put it like that. I'm going to place it somewhere over here, maybe something like that. And I'm going to hit enter once I'm done. And again, it looks a bit weird because, of course, we have just copied that onto a new layer. So now we're going to create another layer mask by hitting the layer mask symbol here. And once we have hit the layer mask symbol with a black brush in an opacity of, I don't know, 40% or something, and maybe make that a bit smaller as well, I'm going to start to remove the effect from the mountain area. And this is going to take a moment because I'm going to make sure that, uh, you know, I don't bring the sky back here, essentially. So I'm just going to go in slowly and take my time and just remove it bit by bit to make sure it looks good. I'll bring it back in just a moment once I have to clear out the mountain and I'll show you how we continue from there. All right, guys, and the mountain looks way better. And uh, now we just have to remove the same thing from up here, just like that, and also from up here a little bit. Let's make it a bit smaller. Bring it back here. Okay, so you see just the back and forth with my layer mask essentially where I'm trying to hide the effect from certain areas. For example, the edge we had here in the corner and from other areas I have to bring it through. So like here, I want to hide a bit more. And I think overall that doesn't look bad. We have some sort of patch here, which might not be the thing we really want. So let's see if we can get rid of that. Okay, that's not from either one of the layers. That might indeed just be dust on my lens. Damn, I'm gonna have to clean that. Okay, no problem. Uh, for that, I'm just gonna go back to, let me see, I'm gonna, no, we're gonna do it in the end when the sky is done. We're gonna blur anyway, there's no point in cleaning it now. Cool, let's just continue like we have done so far. Okay, what I wanna do, I wanna blur the sky now a little bit. For that, I'm just gonna create another stamp visible by hitting Command, Alt, or Command or Control on the Windows, uh, Shift and E. Okay, so that's Command or Control, Alt, Shift and E to copy everything onto a new layer. Once done, I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, and then down to Radial Blur. Once I have reached that, I'm going to switch to Zoom, Quality, whatever. Let's just uh, choose Good. It's a bit faster. And then an amount you feel comfortable with. Um, you can also place the center of the blur. I'm just going to place it somewhere there. I'm going to hit OK. And this usually takes a moment, but not in this case. Damn, and it's obviously far too much as well. Uh, so I'm just going to reverse that, hitting Command and Z on my keyboard. Go back to filter, say blur, Gaussian blur, and no, not Gaussian blur. That was a reflex because I'm using the Gaussian blur all the time. The radial blur, and I'm going to switch down to something like 37. Let's hit OK. OK, that's way better. Damn it, the other one was a little bit too extreme, I think. Um, I'm going to reverse it one more time, go in and do it one more time. Just because I want to make sure that we are not blurring these mountains too much. So I'm going to go down to maybe 30, 29, whatever. Something like that. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put a layer mask on that. Hit Command and I on the keyboard to invert that layer mask. Get a nice and large brush with an opacity of 30%. I'm going to bring that blurred sky through. Okay, we can even go up to 50%, I guess. Why wouldn't we? Okay. And just a little bit around the edges here. We can also go in here a little bit. We just have to make sure that we don't get the actual, you know, um, blurred land, <laughs> essentially, into our image. So I'm just going to go ahead like that. Now, what you can do, just to get rid of the problem that when we blur, then we blur also the landscape and it goes into the sky. I'm just going to go select the layer, 
Okay, so I have the layer, not the layer mask selected. I hit L on my keyboard, which is the lasso. I'm just quickly make a very, very rough selection here around my actual sky. I suppose you could also use the magic wand tool and all this kind of stuff, but uh, that's the fastest. Awesome, and then I'm going to hit Command and J on the keyboard. Now I have only the sky on a separate layer, right? So if I move that around, you can see I have the sky, which is nice because now I can select this layer, go to Filter, Blur, and where is it? Radial Blur. And now I can blur a little bit more than I was able to do before. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. Oh, we had a little bit of a uh, mountain in there. Why was that? That is not a very nice mountain. Let me see here. Is that interesting? The selection I have made was, ah, uh, I see, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Should have done that a little bit earlier, maybe. That's cool, that's totally fine. What I'll do instead, I'll select the layer mask again because I can see that we have a little bit of mountain there. Once I have the layer mask with a black brush, I'll get rid of the mountain blur right here. And now I'm going to have to hit Command, I'll Shift and E once more, create another stamp visible, hit L. I'm just going to run through this just to get back to my <laughs> sky layer I just had there. Oops, I was close. Okay, here we go. Hit Command and J, and now with that, Filter, Blur, and where is it? Radial Blur, here we are. Let's try that once more. We go a bit higher, 49. And here we go, yes. Now I only blur the sky, of course, because we only have the sky on that layer, and not the other, you know, the other areas of the landscape, essentially, which is kind of good. And the only thing we have to do in that, ins that instance is hitting B, get our brush, make it nice and large, and make sure with a black brush, that the blurred sky is not on our landscape and making it kind of milky. Cool, that looks good and I'm liking it a lot. Now, the only thing left to do, and I don't know if you realize that, but because we have created a soft light layer before somewhere, right, it's called a soft origin effect, uh, there is a lot of yellow and red in the image, especially in the is today my words are not the best, well, it actually happens every time I'm recording, so whatever. Anyway, so there's a lot of yellow and a lot of red in the image. You can get rid of this a little bit. I mean, if you like it, hey, keep it. But in my case, I want to reduce it just a tiny bit. So I'm going to create a curve adjustment layer. I'm going to go from RGB down to red, okay? Once there, I'm going to de decrease the red a little bit. Then I'm going to go down to blue. I'm going to decrease the blues. No, I'm going to actually increase the blues a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the greens. And let's see, I'm going to, I suppose, decrease them a little bit to something like that. Once I have done that, if I switch it on or off, you can see that we have taken a lot of this yellow color how would you say, general feeling of the image uh, away, and it's way more in a nice color composition and a nice combination of colors than it was before, okay? So before it was really shiny yellow, and now it's more like a, I don't know, like a soft, nice color composition. I don't know how to describe it. You see it. You see it with your own eyes, damn it. Okay, and once we have done that, that is all there was to do. The only thing I did as well was sharpening the image, but that I have shown you so many times that maybe today, for once, I'm not going to do it. Whew. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, please do not forget to hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you are new and you haven't already, please do not forget to subscribe. It's going to help me out greatly. Cool. If you have anything else, just drop me a comment anywhere. And otherwise, I shall see you the next time. Bye.